Convicted double murderer Eric Kennedy Fan has been sentenced to two life terms in prison with no chance of parole. Back in August, Fan admitted to strangling Lauren Barnes, a Bethany woman who said she was carrying his unborn child and then burying them in an Oklahoma City park. I stepped out when he testified and then I came back in hoping I wouldn't hear much and then um, Suzanne Lister was doing an awesome job and so then I stepped back out because I don't, I don't, I know what he did, I don't need to hear him say that. I was glad to hear him say it though. I was definitely glad to hear him admit it. We knew what, like I said, we knew what he did, and so it was just a matter of him actually coming up and saying it. And just none of his story ever fit before. Now it fits. So we knew we knew he we was a better. liar. Yeah, we knew he was a liar, and, and man, he showed it in there. He was kind of lying up there on the stand, wasn't he? Yeah, yes, uh, he new, was. uh, more than numerous times. Yes. What do you feel about the sentence? That's what we wanted. That's what we wanted. I mean, we don't get Lauren back. He doesn't need to be back in society ever. I don't care if he's 103. I knew where the grave was. Um, I had seen a copy of the Emmy's report, so I knew a lot of this stuff that was said. I just didn't want to hear him say it. He never really showed any remorse up there, did he? No. What do you think about that? No. Well, I said something like that in my victim impact statement. You know, his sister sat back beside him and cried, and he never shed a tear. Never. And looked right at me the whole time. Thank you for forgiving? No, I don't want to. I'm sorry, that's just me, and, and maybe in 10 or 12 or 30 or... Maybe someday, but not now. Yeah, I'm not, I, I'm not you know, worried about it. You don't, you don't dig a hole the day before. You don't agonize over your planned... I mean, he planned this. It wasn't a... Even if it was a spur of the moment, he chose to do that. There's no true justice in a case like this because Lauren and Avery won't come back. And we have a young man, 21 years old, going away to prison for the rest of his life with no hope of, of ever getting out, who has a family that's hurting as well. So there's really no true, true justice in a case like this. But the family was willing to take the death penalty off the table once they realized that this defendant did uh, allow them the opportunity to find their daughter and, and give her and uh, she and her daughter a burial, uh, and this is what the family wanted. It was a tough decision for the judge, obviously, very emotional on both sides. I think he, uh, as he said in his final portions of his sentencing, said he, ha he uh, has prayers for all of them and everyone involved. Just very difficult. How important was it to get him to say on the stand that he had dug the hole before the murder? I thought it was extremely important because it showed the level of premeditation. He'd always kind of tried to minimize it a little bit, saying they got into an argument once they got to the park. And that was always our thought, that he had dug the hole. And we'd, we'd done some drive times, and some the Bethany Police Department actually went out and dug a similar hole, same size. Um, and it actually fit within that time frame, but we just didn't believe that he could have done it at night um, the way that he did it. The hole uh, was just... She's just bound up and tightly within that hole. It was just big enough to fit her body in there. And um, I, th I think that he put a lot of thought into it, as it was evidenced by the gloves, by, by the establishing the alibis, the going by and keeping the receipts. When he's interviewed the first time with, with the Bethany Police Department, he's very specific of, hey, I've got these receipts. You know, not very many people can remember exactly what they were doing seven or eight days ago and the times that they were doing it. But he, um, he put a lot of thought into it. And I thought one of the most probably surprising moments on, on the cross-examination of Mr. Fan was, or even on the direct, was where he admitted that it was, the, the confrontation was over. She had, you know, had, was, was doing what, she, what he wanted her to do, was actually giving him, a, giving him a kiss when he decided that that's when he was going to choke the life out of her. So he certainly admitted today on the stand that he was a cold-blooded killer. Are you shocked he took the stand? Yeah, I was a bit surprised, um, but certainly happy to cross-examine him. You kind of tried to make a spur of the moment, and then you kind of <laughs> caught him with the, with the uh, uh, digging the grave uh, ahead of time in the afternoon. What did you feel when you said that? I, I was uh, surprised <laughs> and wanted to make sure that I heard it correctly the first time, so I asked a couple more times just to make sure that, that, that he did, in fact, do it earlier that, that afternoon, because he's never, ever said that. Uh, <laughs>